In Ezekiel 28, the word of the Lord came again unto me, saying, Son of man, say unto the prince of Tyrus. Now I want you to notice that, that this is the prince of Tyrus. <laughs> Thus saith the Lord God, Because thine heart is lifted up, and thou hast said, I am a God. Now think about it. Here's a prince, a man, who says he's a God. I sit, that's what he says, in the seat of God, in the midst of the seas. Yet thou art a man, and not God. Though thou set thine heart as the heart of God. Behold, thou art wiser than Daniel. There is no secret that they can hide from thee. One translation says, you say you're wiser than Daniel. With thy wisdom and with thine understanding, thou hast gotten thee riches and hast gotten gold and silver into thy treasures by thy great wisdom and by thy traffic. Hast thou increased thy riches, and thine heart is lifted up because of thine riches? Therefore, thus saith the Lord God, because thou hast set thine heart as the heart of God, behold, therefore I will bring strangers upon thee, the terrible of the nations, and they shall draw their swords against the beauty of thy wisdom, and they shall defile thy brightness. They shall bring thee down to the pit, and thou shalt die the deaths of them that are slain in the midst of the seas. Wilt thou yet say before him that slayeth thee, I am a God? But thou shalt be a man and no God. In the hand of him that slayeth thee, thou shalt die the deaths of the uncircumcised by the hand of, the stra of strangers. For I have spoken it, saith the Lord God. Now, in verses 1 through 10, this is talking to a man and talking about a man who has he has been convinced that he's, a, he's God. He's a God. Now, and he's sitting in the seat of God. Now, that's really important. I want you to listen to this. But when we get to verse 11, <clears throat> something changes here. The Lord starts talking to someone else who's not a man. He says, Moreover, the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, take up a lamentation, a funeral song. Upon the king of Tyrus. So he was talking to the prince of Tyrus. Now he's talking to the king of Tyrus. And say unto him, Thus saith the Lord, Thou sealest up the sum, full of wisdom and perfect in beauty. Thou hast been in Eden, the garden of God. Well, wait a minute. This can't be a man. Because this being was in Eden, the garden of God. Every precious stone was thy covering. The sardius, the topaz, the diamond, the beryl, the onyx, and the jasper, the sapphire, the emerald, the carbuncle, and gold, and workmanship of thy tabrets and of thy pipes was prepared in thee in the day that thou wast created. So this is a created being. Then in verse 14, he tells us who it is. Thou art the anointed cherub that covereth, and I have set thee so. Thou wast upon the holy mountain of God. Thou hast walked up and down in the midst of the stones of fire. Thou wast perfect in thy ways from the day that thou wast created till iniquity was found in thee. And watch verse 16. By the multitude of thy merchandise, they have filled the midst of thee with violence, and thou hast sinned. Therefore I will cast thee as profane out of the mountain of God, and I will destroy thee, O covering cherub. This is a cherub. He's talking about Lucifer when he fell. From the midst of the stones of fire, thine heart was lifted up because of thy beauty. Thou hast corrupted thy wisdom by reason of thy brightness. I will cast thee to the ground. I will lay thee before kings that they may behold thee. Thou hast defiled thy sanctuaries by the multitude of thy iniquities, by the iniquity of thy traffic. Therefore will I bring forth a fire from the midst of thee, and it shall devour thee, and I will bring thee to ashes upon the earth in the sight of all them that behold thee. Now I want you to notice in verse 5, talking to the prince, the man, he says, by your great wisdom and by your traffic you've increased. Verse 18, talking to, the, to Satan himself, he said, you've defiled your sanctuaries by the multitude of your iniquities, by the iniquity of your traffic. See, one of the most horrible things you hear the world talk about right now is trafficking. Trafficking simply means merchandising, trading, 
selling. And I want you to understand something. There is such a thing as horrible as what we see this, this word used as today. There is also such a thing known as spiritual trafficking. Spiritual trafficking. Now here we have a man. Now this is going to sound strange to some of you, but listen to what I'm telling you. From verses 1 through 10 is talking to a man. Verses 11 through 18 and down through here is talking to Satan himself. And both of them are traffickers. You notice that? So they met on the trading floor in the spirit. And this man sold his soul to Satan. He trafficked his soul. Satan traded him for his soul. And so there's such a thing as, as trading uh, for, for your soul. I want to talk to you about something called spiritual trafficking. Now, now we find out. That this man was so possessed with the devil that he thinks he's a God, not a man. He believes he's wiser than Daniel, but he's just a man. This is a man controlled by Satan. Then when he starts talking about the devil being a trafficker, notice he traded his soul for power, false wisdom, and it would soon be required of him. Satan is a, tra is a trafficker. The Bible said this was one of his major downfalls. Trading his anointing, he's the only cherub we ever have record of that was anointed. And he traded this anointing for allegiance and worship and this anointing that was on him. It didn't take him long to figure out he was different than the other cherubs, the other angels. He knew this. So then when he fell, he, he brought that into the earth. And he began to traffic for the souls of men. He wanted the souls of men. And so he would trade them. And he'll pull his wagon right up to wherever a man is. And like a peddler or like someone who has a wagon of wares to sell. And he'll bring those up there. And he'll begin to barter and trade. And keep bringing things out of his stuff, out of his storage. Until he can find something that will catch the man's eye. Find something that will have a gleam in his eye. That he will sell his soul over to him. And Satan would have trafficked a soul. Now, we find out, we go over here, let's, um, let's look at something oh, in Luke. Yeah, let's look at Luke 12, and let's put this up on the screen. Luke 12 and verse 15, and if you'll stay with me a few minutes, we're, we're learning something here. How many of you are getting something out of this now? The trafficking of the soul. This is a very serious thing. The trafficking of the human soul. Now, notice in, in verse 15. Well, we'll start in 13. And one of the company said unto him, talking to Jesus, Master, speak to my brother that he divide the inheritance with me. And he said unto him, Man, who made me a judge or a divider over you? And he said unto them, Take heed and beware of covetousness. For a man's life consisteth not of the abundance of the things which he possesseth. And he spake a parable unto them, saying, The ground of a certain rich man brought forth plentifully. And he thought within himself, saying, What shall I do, because I have no room where to bestow my fruits? And he said, This will do. I will pull down my barns and build greater. And there will I bestow all my fruits and my goods. And I will say to my soul, Soul, thou hast much goods laid up for many years. Take thine ease, eat, drink, and be merry. But God said unto him, Thou fool, this night thy soul shall be required of thee. Then who shall those things be which thou hast provided? He says, so is he that layeth up treasure for himself and not rich toward God. So this man, it didn't say God required his soul. It said his soul was required. 
This man had, had his soul trafficked. He was thinking now only of heaping up to himself. Nothing else. Thought, taking thought for no one around him. Not even sharing the goods out of a stacked barn. Just tear the barns down. Spend the money to build bigger barns and fill it up so that he could feed his soul with it. His soul had been trafficked. Satan had traded him something for his soul. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 